So 24 years ago, LEGO Star Wars launched the subgenre as we all know and love today as the Ultimate Collector series. Now, it originally launched with a UCS X-Wing Starfighter and a UCS TIE Interceptor, the latter of which has gotten multiple remakes, most notably last year in 2023, but the Interceptor hasn't until now. Let me introduce to you guys the second edition of the TIE Interceptor. It's not officially a second edition though, I'm gonna call it that. With 1,931 pieces, the set number being 75382, the TIE Interceptor is gonna come in at $240, pretty dang pricey, especially for that price per piece ratio. It will launch on May 1st of 2024, in line with the normal LEGO Star Wars May the 4th Be With You promotion that they do every year. Now, I gotta say, the Interceptor looks pretty good. I, on the other hand, could care less about a TIE Interceptor. When I heard the original rumors, I was like, why? Why do we need this? There's so many other UCS sets begging for a UCS version. What about a U-Wing? But the Interceptor looks so much better, at least on the box art. Now, obviously, I haven't built it yet, but I am very excited to. More than I anticipated. It looks really good. Maybe it's this box art, that little bit of red behind there. And if we take a look at the back of the box, it is worth noting that we are getting a brand new and exclusive TIE Pilot. Now, this one does have arm printing, and it is fairly similar to the one that we got in years past with the normal UCS TIE Fighter. Now, this looks to be a more updated new version. I'll be comparing the two figures shortly, and I also will compare the UCS TIE versus the TIE Interceptor here in a few minutes as well. The stand looks really good. It's actually in line with the original 2000 version with how it's being held up. Now, I don't have that version to unfortunately compare it to. It actually goes for a lot on the aftermarket, like $600 used, $1,000 plus new in box. It's a hard to find set. So it actually makes sense for LEGO to make a UCS TIE Interceptor again, given how inflated that original set really has become on the aftermarket. With that said, I do wanna say there is links down in the description if you guys wanna order this set at lego.com. It's affiliated, helps out the channel. And I also wanna thank LEGO for sending this set over for review. Without further ado, let's go into the in-depth of the UCS TIE Interceptor. So first off, there is a small sticker sheet in the TIE Interceptor. Thankfully, all of these stickers are only being utilized on the interior, which is a little bit better in my opinion. Now next, we have a printed piece, which is of course the 8x16 plaque tile. Now there's something new and unique about this, which I wasn't expecting. This is a brand new molded piece. So the main difference here is one is matte finish and the other is a shiny finish, which matches all the other Lego tiles we normally get. So here's the old Venator class Republic attack cruiser plaque with that matte finish showing that molding nipple right in the middle, very presently. Whereas the new one, it's still there, the nipple, but at least it's a little bit more hidden because the rest of the plaque is shiny now. It also makes me wonder if we'll see this new version of the tile in in-production UCS sets like the Falcon, Venator, Luke's Land Speeder, and the X-Wing. Only time will tell. On the other hand of things, we have a very nice instruction booklet with plenty of art of the TIE Interceptor, even showing the old original version. And of course, they have to show how to properly hold this UCS set, which is always funny to me. Yet another surprise you'll find in the instruction booklet that there is a little ad here for an upcoming special edition Lego Star Wars book called The Force of Creativity. That'll be very interesting to see. I can't wait to get my hands on this. Now finally making our way to the TIE Interceptor, my first impressions are, wow, <laughs> this thing is pretty nice looking. Like I said earlier, I'm shocked at how good it looks and it's even better to build. This set just continues to get better for me, which again, I just, I did not expect that for this type of set. And yeah, it's good. Now, before we get into those nitty gritty details about the set, let's take a look at the two minifigures kind of. First up is a TIE Fighter Pilot, or TIE Interceptor Pilot. In this case, they're pretty much the same. Now, this is a new iteration of the Pilot with arm printing, and the design is fairly similar to the TIE Fighter UCS set from 2015. I'll compare that here in just a second. And you'll see that there is just a normal face underneath the helmet, nothing crazy. And then here's the two Pilots. This is the 2015 on the left, 20. 24 on the right, nine years difference. And it's pretty interesting to see the very minute differences between the designs, but they're relatively similar figures, but there are notable differences. Now the second quote unquote figure is a droid being a mouse droid, though it's just brick built and nothing crazy special. Also on the plaque here, you'll find a printed 25th anniversary brick. This is included in a lot of sets throughout 2024, so not that rare or uncommon. The brick built stand is pretty much the norm. There's nothing crazy different about this stand compared to others. However, there is a few different 
angles, apparently, you can position this stand. It doesn't say anything about that in the instructions, though it looks that way. So we're going to test that out here in a second. First off, lots of swooshability on this set. But what about turning the tie interceptor in different angles on the stand? Is that possible? Now, as the current angle shows, no. But if we adjust the stand slightly more, it's still not possible, unfortunately, to angle it on the side like you could with last year's X-Wing Starfighter. You know, you could kind of do it, but it's very much drooping and not recommended for me and probably not recommended from LEGO. Now, what about a downwards angle? This is more reasonable. You could do this. There's enough, you know, distance on the stand to make it work, though it looks kind of silly in my opinion. But if you're into this, this is also a possibility to display your interceptor like so. For me, I'm probably going to leave the interceptor with the angle and stand as it comes and not really modified. I think it does look really good as is at its current position. It really shows off pretty much all the nice aspects of the set and doesn't really have to hide anything either. I also have to say this thing is a blast to play around with. I literally feel like a little kid again with this thing. Getting closer up to the interceptor, you'll quickly realize how many great techniques are being utilized here. And the build experience for this set was fairly enjoyable actually. While there is some repetition with the wings and such, I really liked putting this thing together far more than I had anticipated. At the front of the cockpit, you'll find a nice printed windshield piece. And below that we have some laser cannons as well with a little bit of red sticking out there. And then I love the use of the little video game controller Lego piece there on the side, just nice little piece usage, which I always enjoy. We have another printed piece on the very top of the cockpit area that can be opened up. Going inside the cockpit will reveal a lot of control panels that are actually very accurate to the real TIE Interceptor, and it's really well done. And I was also pleasantly surprised by how the designer did the control panel area, which is utilizing some Overwatch pieces right here, the little blaster cannon, and then there's even a little mini X-Wing there in the middle for targeting. Oddly, I would say the interior of this TIE Interceptor is minifigure scale. While it doesn't seem like you're supposed to do this, the figure fits perfectly perfectly in there. And you can even see the TIE pilot through the windshield, which looks really good, really, really good. Making our way to the wings now on the sides, we'll see some different turrets right here, which also look great. I love the design work here, the technique being utilized to put these little candle pieces right here to get that little spring action. It's quite clever as well as utilizing shovels. You'll see a train wheel on the side of the wing as well, which is surprising. Again, great parts usage throughout the interceptor. Now underneath the wings is a little bit of a different story. There is a lot of anti studs and I could definitely see some inverted tiles being used here to kind of clean it up. I, on the other hand, don't mind this. It actually matches a lot of other UCS sets, so it kind of blends in in that way, but I'm sure it'll bother some people. There is some nice little details here on the end of the wings. I believe these are some more cannons or blasters. Love the technique being utilized there. And then just the overall styling of the cockpit area from any angle looks so good. I love all of the curves. It still has some studs. It's not all smoothed out. It's probably just the right amount. I'm always particular about how many studs or how little studs there are on Lego Star Wars UCS sets. And I really think this set, it has a very nice balance, at least to me, that's gonna vary person to person. I am also relatively surprised by how many different angles there are to look and view the interceptor at. Like it looks different from literally every single side. Everything about it has an interesting viewpoint, more so than even the normal UCS TIE Fighter. And that makes sense given on the triangular shape of the vehicle. There's also some anti-stud greebling, which I think is pretty interesting. You rarely see that on UCS sets. That's something kind of new, at least to me. I also have to hand it to the designer Hendrick who has also designed the original 2000 TIE Interceptor as well as many other iconic LEGO Star Wars sets. He did a really good job making sure this thing was pretty much bulletproof. No pieces fall off when you pick it up and move it around. Moving on to the comparison now, let's bring in the UCS 2015 TIE Fighter set, which clearly shows that these two sets are meant to be paired side by side on display. They scale perfectly to each other as you would hope and expect, and they look so good. However, when you take a closer look at the 2015 TIE Fighter, it's clear that LEGO has definitely changed their design style here, most notably on the cockpit. It's very different between the two. One is traditionally brick built with normal slope pieces, whereas we have curved slopes on the new iteration at specialty angles, utilizing brackets and new snot type of LEGO pieces. Those just didn't exist nine years ago, and it really shows in the new iteration of what a TIE Fighter today can look like as a UCS set. 
Now, aside from the design differences between these two, and of course, price differences, the TIE Fighter originally came in at $200, of course, the TIE Interceptor at $240, you'll also notice that size plays a big part here. However, if you take the Interceptor and you turn it on its side upwards, you can see that they're actually relatively the same footprint. It's just how the Interceptor is angled. So if you have the 2015 UCS TIE Fighter, then you're probably eventually going to want to pick up this UCS Interceptor. They literally look like a perfect pairing in most regards. So what about the third iteration of the X-Wing Starfighter? These two sets are going to be sold alongside each other side by side for at least the next year or two to come. And I have to say they look really good next to each other. A perfect pairing if you want to have the Rebellion versus the Empire on your shelf. I think both of these sets look amazing. And it's kind of funny that LEGO has now remade the two original UCS sets that launched this whole subgenre all those years ago. Now you can get the newest iterations of them, which is pretty cool 24 years later. And lastly, just for fun, here's the Interceptor versus the $650 UCS Venator that came out last year in 2023. Again, we're talking like a $400 difference between these two sets. It shows you pretty much get three times the size with the Venator, and that's appropriate for what it is, but it shows that the Interceptor is pretty small actually. So as I was finishing the TIE Interceptor, it became very clear to me that I really like this set, like more than I probably should. When I initially heard the rumor about this set last year in 2023, I was like, come on, Lego, you can do better. There's so many other UCS sets that need to be made in this $200, uh, $240 now <laughs> price range. Why the Interceptor? Why do we need this remake now? Uh, but now that I've built the set, now that I've experienced it, mm, I like this thing way more than I was expecting. But a little caveat there, I just wanna say part of that reasoning is for me personally, I have some nostalgia with this set. Not because I had the original 2000 model, the blue TIE Interceptor, the original UCS version. It's actually because one of the first LEGO Star Wars UCS sets I ever had as a kid was the Vader's TIE Advanced. And as you might imagine, you know, most TIE fighters kind of look the same, they kind of build the same, and it's kind of the same thing with the TIE Interceptor here. As I was putting this together, I was getting nostalgic feelings about, wow, I remember putting that Vader's TIE Advance together as a kid, this is pretty awesome. But not only that, the building techniques in this set are literally top notch. Like there was multiple times as I was putting this thing together where I was like, damn Lego, you really did that? <laughs> like, shoot. Um, I was very impressed. I really was. Uh, as a big Lego Star Wars fan and as a big mock builder, this was a fun set to put together. It's not perfect. You know, there's a lot of anti studs here. There's studs on the top, but I think it blends in together with most UCS sets. I love the techniques being utilized here on the cockpit area. I mean, I like the way it looks. That's definitely gonna vary from person to person, but I like it. And so on that note, can I recommend this set at $240? I mean, you get a great minifigure. I think the mouse droid's pretty funny that they included that. I love that Lego finally remade the 8x16 tile. That was very much welcomed and needed. But does that all add up to $240? I don't think so. I still think this should be a $200 set. That's not to say that I think this is an excellent UCS set. I personally love this thing. I can't wait to put this on my shelf and display it against all my other UCS sets. I really think it is a great addition, but not at $240. I think it should have been $200. And that's where most of the UCS sets have been for the longest time up until the last two or three years, ever since I think it was Luke's Land Speeder when Lego hiked up the price up because of inflation up from 200 to 240. I really think that needs to go back down to 200. Uh, so if you can pick this set up for 200 bucks, this is definitely recommended for me. At 240, I don't think I can say you should pick it up. I would also, you know, put a little caveat there as well that if you can get this set on May the 4th during that promotional period from May 1st to May 5th, there is gonna be a droid troop carrier that comes with this set because it meets the $160 threshold. And I think if you're pairing that droid carrier with the TIE Interceptor, I think that's actually a pretty fair value because I think that droid carrier is gonna be uh, worth a lot in the long term. Definitely go check out my review on that here on the channel. So if you're pairing the two sets, the, the GWP with this, I would say yes, it comes recommended for me on day one. Without it, you know, if you're watching this review later in May of 2024 and thereafter, and it's still $240, hasn't dropped in price either on lego.com, or maybe it showed up on Amazon and it's dropped on price, uh, I would not recommend it at its full retail price is what I'm trying to say. Um, get it for 220, get it for 200, really. I think 200 is the sweet spot. Um, but this is one at some point 
down the line worth picking up. So that's what I have to say. Thanks again, Lego, for sending this set over for review. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to check out all the other Lego Star Wars spring, May the 4th, 2024 Lego Star Wars sets reviews. Hope you guys have a great, wonderful day, and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.